Okay, now for number 19 from this paper, which is the May-June 2020 paper 2, variant 1 from the International GCSE, IGCSE from Cambridge. Uh, this question here is about this cuboid A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H of length 20 meters and width 5.5 centimeters. So of length 20 centimeters and width 5.5 centimeters. The volume of the cuboid is 495 cubed centimeters. Find the angle between the line AG and the base of the cuboid A, B, C, D. Okay, so first of all, let's work out, let's have a look at what we have to find. All right, we have to find the angle between the line AG, so let me connect A to G. So that looks like it's going across from the front to the back of the cuboid, diagonally across the, the cuboid, like if you're in a room from one corner at the bottom to the other corner at the top. And we have to also find the angle between that and the base of the cuboid A, B, C, D. All right, so what, what would be the angle between this line and the base? Well, it would be the angle between this line and if you drop this line where it would fall if it, f it just fell vertically down where would it fall on the base if it could fall down or if you had a light shining from above perpendicular to the base <coughs> where would the shadow of that line if for example it was a stick or something where would the shadow of that fall on the base and we can see that that clearly would fall and i'll put it in a slightly different color so we can imagine that that this would be the shadow of this line on the base of the cuboid. That's where the shadow would fall from. It should fall from there, from <clears throat> from A to C, if there was a light shining from above. So we're looking at this is a right angle. This is a right angle because it's where the corner of the cuboid meets the floor of the cuboid. If you look at the corner of a room, you'll see <clears throat> that the floor and the wall Okay, they meet at right angles. That's what we can see here. It doesn't look like a right angle because this is a, this is a three-dimensional diagram. Okay, it's not like a, you know, you can't draw a three-dimensional diagram. Like, for example, this, these are right angles here. This is a right angle. Okay, it doesn't look like one when you look at it directly. But if you think about it, it's a right angle. This is <coughs> one side of the cuboid. <coughs> the cuboid is made of rectangles on each face. And similarly, this is the this is the wall of the cuboid, and this is the floor of the cuboid. They meet at right angles, so that is a right angle triangle. Um, now we don't we want to find this angle here. Let me call this angle theta. We don't know anything about this triangle, this rectangle, or this triangle that this is part of. I don't know any of the lengths in it. Okay. Um, however, <clears throat> I can find some of the lengths in it. For example, I can find the length AC. AC would be part of this triangle here. Okay, so if I consider, if you look directly down at this shape, okay, you'll see this triangle at the base, which is like the, the diagonal of the rectangle of the base, and that would look something like this. Can I draw? Let me just do it by... So you'd have, a, a, you'd have like a, a triangle like this. Okay, this would be like the, the base... Okay, so let's just, that would be A, and that would be D, and that would be C. Okay, and this is 20 centimeters, and this is 5.5 centimeters. So I can find what AC is. I can say AC is equal to, by Pythagoras, the square root of, it's a hypotenuse, so it's 20 squared plus 5.5 squared. So we can just put in our calculator, um, 20 squared plus 5.5 squared that gives us 1721 1 over 4 okay so that's going to give you the square root of the square root of 1721 1 over 4 which gives you the square root of 1721 1 over 2 okay um, square root of 4 is 2 okay that will give you the length of that line AC okay if I, if I put the square root of this what will it give me it gives me a decimal. I'm going to leave it in this form because then I'm going to round it at the end. So that's the, the length of AC. All right. Now we need to find in our triangle, the triangle that we're using now, we've got AGC. So we're using a triangle AGC. So I'll just make a little sketch of it here. We're using the triangle AGC. <clears throat> that's the triangle we're actually using to find the angle. This is what our objective is. This is the angle that <coughs> we're trying to find. This is A. And this is G, 
and this is um, C. This is the right angle, and we now know the length of AC, which is 20, um, which is the square root of 1721 over 2. We need to find another length of this triangle. Okay, we need to find another length. Okay, now, <clears throat> to find another length, we definitely need the height of the triangle. We need the height of the triangle. Okay, now, how do we find the height of the, uh, sorry, yeah, the height of this triangle, which is the height of the cuboid? We need to find this length GC. Now, if you get stuck in a question like this, <clears throat> how do we find the length GC? We don't have anything else in terms of lengths here. Always go back to the question and read it. They give you information, not just for decoration. They give you information because you might, well, you most probably will have to use it. So they told us about the volume of the cuboid. Why did they tell us about the volume of the cuboid? What's that got to do with finding this angle? Well, <clears throat> we know the area of the base of this cuboid. Okay, the height of the cuboid which is what we need to find this angle now, can be found. Because we know the volume, and we know the volume of this. This is a prism. The volume is the cross-sectional area times its depth or its height. Or for a cuboid, you can say the length times the width times the height. So knowing that the volume is 495 and the length is 20 and the width is 5.5, we can find the height. So we can say that the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height and the volume is 495, the length is 20 and the width is 5.5. So we can now find what the height is just by rearranging this 495 over 20 times 5.5. <clears throat> so we have 495 over 20 times 5.5 and that gives us 9 over 2 which is 4.5 so the height is 4.5 centimeters so now I know that this is 4.5 centimeters I can now find my angle theta and the angle theta is going to be found by tangent because we have the tangent of this angle is the opposite over the adjacent so you got 4.5 divided by the square root of 1, 7, 2, 1 over 2. And we can work out what that, that is now. So we have 4.5. Um, so we'll say inverse tan of 4.5 over, uh, I can say, um, 0 0.5 times the square root of um, 1, 7, 2, 1. Okay, that's the same as this. It's a half of that. Oh, whoops, let me put the bracket in the right place. And we are in degree mode. Yes, we're in de make sure you're in degree mode. If you're in radian mode, you have a problem here. We don't use uh, radian mode in this IGCSE work. So make sure you calculate in degree mode before you start your exam. And then you put equals, and it gives you 12.240. So that's um, therefore theta equals 12.240 degrees which you round to one decimal place unless otherwise stated. Okay, it doesn't say anything, so yes, you should round it to one decimal place. So there's the answer, 12.2 degrees, and that's the end of this question number 19, okay, from uh, this paper. Other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that appears up here. Other questions from this topic of, I guess it's uh, menstruation as well as trigonometry, so I'll, maybe I'll put one uh, put it in the playlist for menstruation and one for trigonometry over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on that link thank you for watching and see you soon